Wait a minute. Was that just an elephant? Oh my gosh. Does anybody else see that elephant right there? Hey, cousin colleagues. Welcome to the More Laughing at Work podcast. Let's talk. I mean, come on. Look at everybody introducing themselves to the new guy. <laughs> look at that. Look, look, look. Look at Chucky Charles talking that man head off. Is Susie Q. Oh, my gosh. Here we go, Margie Manager. You know she want to tell her whole life story. Hey, look, you got, you got them, they, and Peyton Person. What? Everybody is talking to. I didn't even know that that lady still work here. When did she come from? Why, why is everybody harassing the new guy? He don't remember nothing. Y'all, he, he, it's, this is not going to stay with him. What? In the, this is so awkward. I don't, I don't know why I'm putting that man through this talk about, so let me know how I can, he doesn't know. He doesn't, he doesn't even know what the bathroom is. Just give him a minute guys. It's his first week. Oh my gosh. Sir, just run. If anybody else says anything, okay, here goes somebody else in their bio. All right. Well, that is awkward. But if nobody else sees it, I guess neither do I. Hmm. See what? Hey, cousin colleagues. Welcome to the More Laughing at Work podcast. Let's talk. What's up, everybody? I don't know why I just went and started yelling at y'all like that. <laughs> Took the octave all the way up. That's how we go start. That's how we start in. Welcome back to the More Laughing at Work podcast. I am your host, comedian and HR lady, Allison Moore. And I am so glad that you, my coworker, cousin, friend, have joined me today. The More Laughing at Work podcast is, you know what I'm saying? It's a little, it's, it's giving a little work life with a little money and then some funny. You know what I'm saying? We, we're going to do our professional development thing but we also we got to live and again make this money okay so anywho today's episode today we're talking like all of the things around starting a new job well we're not going to do all the things around starting a new job because baby the all part it, it it'll just be forever and i'm here for the forever i just want to i just want to give y'all a little space because i'm so excited about this here relationship that you know that we was in and so i'm just going you know reduce it to just a few things but today we're talking about starting a new job because i recently was in the starting a new job space and each I would have loved just a little bit of support and I appreciate the support that I did get and just some of the the framing of how I should approach this new opportunity. So so let's just get into it. Let's shall we shout out to if you are consuming this content visually. <laughs> I don't know what that little creepy thing was, but hey y'all, hey, if you are listening, oh let me turn to the microphone. If you are listening to wait if you're consuming because you could be girl get it out if you're consuming this audio in your podcasteryville i did a, a similar little weird greeting to youtube so hey y'all hey thanks thank you so much um for youtubing with me and podcastering in your podcastables which i'm not sure if you're let me know where you podcastery at are you doing this? Spotify, Apple, Google. Girl, who are you playing with? You ain't even on Apple yet. Your mama not on Apple. Okay. I thought I was. I'm not, but I know I'm on Spotify and Google. Okay. Moving on. Let's get into the professional perspective that I have on starting a new job. Okay. So I have like... um 
two things, two ways to approach or, or yeah, two big takeaways or thoughts around those people who are starting new jobs. You're starting a new job or if you, I mean, maybe this is, you're not starting a new job, but this is still for you because some of y'all that's been in the same seat for forever, you need to be a little more empathetic to the newbies because baby, I know that some of y'all old heads are giving trash experiences to the new hires and just because you miserable and just because you ugly don't I mean you know just because you don't like the way you look in the morning so you got to come to work mad why you got to do that to the people that just got here <laughs> that, that made me think of the elephant in the office today the office elephant uh Y'all, those are y'all who harass these people when they first get here about your life story. They, they are, it's too much. Okay. Peel back is too much. And I'm telling y'all right now, I say y'all, but I'm always talking about me. Okay. Period. Okay. I get my, I am my muse. I come with the foolery. I try to learn from it and I'm sharing with you, but I'm one of those people. Like I know <laughs> this is so terrible, but I did it. So it is what it is. Your mama do terrible things too. So. I literally talked to this lady. She was coming in considering the role, higher level in leadership. And it was, I mean, if I had top three terrible days at that job, that was top two. And they wanted me to have a conversation with her so she can get some insight, meet the team. I boohoo crying. I was so overwhelmed and so going through. And I'm an emotional person anyway, period. If you want some good old fashioned, range of emotions you come my way I got you okay so I gave it to this lady that was just that is just terrible that was her fault I was trying to give a ham it was the get out I tried to tell you you ain't wanna hey I did my part <laughs> uh, look we cannot be traumatizing these people when they first come in. Remember your impact, those of us who have been in a in a role for a while. But those of you who are new this episode, if you're starting a new job, hopefully this is valuable to whatever seat you're in or if you're a leader and you recently hired somebody, just remember what it's like when you're coming on board and everything is new. So here are my, um, I guess, what's on my top of mind. Number one, I, I, I said, okay, girl, Allison, because you know, y'all, I, mean, I, I like to think of, and this, and another one, and another thing, and another thing. Okay, I got you two. Two things, some internal, some external, okay? Because I'm trying to ha- be thoughtful about if you're giving somebody helpful, like, don't be too much. All right, so this, this is me talking to me. Now I'm talking to you. You ready? Okay. So two things I want you to think about. The internal thing is your mindset. Can I talk to you for a minute? Huh, coworker, cousin? Let me let me just encourage you because those of you who know me know anyway that I'm everybody's hype girl. This is what I do, okay? So those of you who just got this new job, you got this job because you deserved it. You worked for it. So let's put your chin up. Let's adjust your crown, queen, kings, and others. Let's make sure that you are feeling confident. This is not, we, we, we dead it the imposter syndrome, but I know that they still, he still creeps up, but today for sure, we're putting it to rest because you are supposed to be there. That door was opened for you. That door was held open exactly specifically for you, shaped and designed just for you. You earned that unless you didn't. If you didn't and you did something, you had no business to get that job. You still need to hold your head up. You really need to hold your damn go head up because you damn wrong. You did, you damn wrong. But you know I ain't gonna judge you. All I'm just saying is don't steal a job from me, okay? But you know you out here stealing jobs and doing whatever to get jobs. You got to answer to that. But hold your head up because I mean you did it now. You was bad, Betsy. You, you're here now, so come on, hold your head up and walk through the door tomorrow. <laughs> Today you need to go repent, but tomorrow you. Won't. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding because I have been shady. Don't y'all come over here looking at my skeletons, okay? Because they not even skeletons. They got flesh and blood on them. I tell that all the time. So let's focus. First of all, 
internally, I want those of you who are just starting a new job or a new role, walk in there with your head up high. You deserve it. This is a new season. This is a blank slate, a new opportunity, a fresh start for you. And you're going to do a great job. You are going to do a great job. You have the skills, whether they be specific or they're transferable. You have the experience. You should be there. You should be in that room. And so that room is going to benefit because you are there. So make sure that you're walking around with your confidence on because, listen, that low self-esteem stuff, that low self-worth, all of that stuff is what really makes us ugly. Okay, second thing. Second thing, external. Okay, so we got our internal. We know we check in our mindsets. Second thing you do, you start in a new job. Listen here, <laughs> y'all. Maybe this tip was just for me, but if you don't take your daggone notebook out and take some real notes, I'm gonna I'm gonna slap you. Listen here, take notes or organize okay from the beginning i know you just got there i know it's a lot going on i know this is an easy first week i know it's really just the basic stuff blah 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 that's how it starts but what's happening is even if the first week or the second week they're not giving you something that's really that has depth or that um is a make or break or a deal breaker or whatever maybe it's not whatever but you are doing like muscle memory right now. You are training yourself. You are creating a habit. So you need to make sure that you are sitting down and writing down what you went over today, the passwords, some suggestions. When you're getting your little random emails, eight of them are just new hire ones. Maybe one or two are actually work related. Go ahead and start from the beginning, organizing your emails with your folders, create folders for your leadership, create folders by subject and, or whatever, but start from the beginning You'll be there before you know it. It'll be six months and your foundation is not laid properly. So I really, really, really want to encourage you. And especially those of you who start in companies that maybe you're a new hire, your onboarding ramp, that experience was not the most, was not the smoothest or the most organized or well thought out for you. So you're like, well, they don't have it to get. I mean, surely it's not that serious. No, let me tell you something. That's a red flag. You start a company and they don't have a new hire or something for you. <laughs> you get there. They forgot you coming. All, like, all of that. That's not a red flag that you don't need to be working there. <laughs> I mean, you know, hey, maybe, but that's not a red flag necessarily that, but it is a red flag that you better for yourself Hold on to all of the important information because, baby, they don't have it together. <laughs> this is just you and you. <laughs> you going to have to hold. Let me tell you something. I have taken that bait before where I'm like, oh, well, shoot, they not. We'll figure it out together. No, ma'am. <laughs> they're used to that dysfunction. They don't have anything together. But in four months, they're going to be expecting your receipts and results. And you're like, well, y'all ain't even have it. I ain't know that we was really serious. <laughs> They serious. They just not organized and not together. So you don't go in there adapting that kind of culture. You go in there and you infiltrate the culture with what you bring to the table with your own organization, with your own discipline, with it's a new start. Even if you didn't have it before, you can have it now. Sit your butt down at the end of the day before you leave out of there and write down for 15 minutes or just recap on your day or whatever. I cannot stress that enough. So, okay. So I would, I am really trying to work on myself and like get better at because I am like a repeater type of person. Like I'm going to say it one way and then I'm going to rephrase it. Just, you know, reorganize some of the letters and the vowels and stuff to make sure that you got the point. Then I'm going to do it again in a story. You know what I'm saying? And then I might follow up after that with a rap. You know what I'm saying? And then to conclude, I'm going to have a uh, an outline of what we are called actions because you got to have those there. And then we're going to have the final closing bit, which is a callback. <laughs> and that is too much. So I'm going to stop it right there. We got two things that I want you to consider if you're starting a new job. And those of you who are supporting people who are new to the team internally and externally. That's my professional perspective. So we're going to take a quick break. And then we're coming right back with, guess what? 
Oh, those of you who cannot see me, I'm doing some kind of weird remix version of The Snake. But when we come back, we are going straight into the break room. What is the break room, you ask? I'm glad that you asked. It is our virtual space where we have co-worker conversations with our co-worker cousins, period. And these are like co-worker conversations with the conversations, no, with the co-workers that we like. You know what I'm saying? It ain't the ones that you like, mm, hey, how was your weekend? Oh, my weekend was great. Mm, how was your, not those. This is the one you like, oh, girl, I cannot wait to talk to you. Or what's up, man, sir? Glad you're here, man. You wasn't here on Tuesday. Everything all right? Like the coworkers that you really like, the ones that are like family. We have those kind of conversations. And today we're having one with a friend of mine, Kiani. Kiani and I, we met a few years ago. I'm really excited about where she is on her journey because she is starting a new job. Like she literally just started a new job and we could not wait to catch up. And then once we did, we were able to talk about her transitioning and then also what's on top of her mind starting a new job, which is creating boundaries and baby. For the people who are like me, <laughs> we need to talk about boundary. <laughs> Bars that grows bad. Okay, wait, right after the break. <laughs> okay, so for, first of all, can we just get into this congratulations that you are owed? <laughs> I think that's uh, fantastic. So here are just some of your flowers. This is, this is not even a flower. These are just petals. But I want to make sure that you hear the congratulations because I mean, first of all, it is hard. It takes a lot of courage and confidence to transition and just to navigate between working for yourself, trying entrepreneurship, corporate America, back and forth. It, it's, it plays with your confidence. There's so many layers to it. And right. for you to just do back and forth and like, listen, I'm, I'm seeing my skills elevated here. I'm doing this. And then I'm trying this. I'm doing that congratulations for that congratulations for you getting such a great job with the senator because i know that they look at a lot of like character stuff and all of that and so you had to have some references and some people who advocated and spoke on your behalf which means yeah. that you had to be putting in some work to impress some people somebody to feel like they should put their name out there for you so congratulations to you and then also I can only imagine how just significant this feels for you to be in your field and I just yeah. want to say congratulations because so many times we get these degrees or we start off on these paths and then we're not able to, we are either derailed, we ourselves sabotage for whatever reason, there's a disconnect. Right. Many times we kind of regret the investment that we made and not being able to see the fruit of that and right. you being able to get back over into that lane is so admirable. Like you are a straight up Shiro. So anyway, <laughs> congratulations. Mm. Thank you. Thank there goes you. another grunt. We're going to grunt you to death, baby. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grunt. Listen. <laughs> okay. So I want to talk about the boundary setting piece of that, but yeah. right before we get there, cause I'm trying to think through like our coworker, our coworker cousins who are like listening to this, like, yo, that's pretty dope. I wonder what made her start looking or be opened to right. another job. And so like you had said, kind of like, I don't even really know how we got here. I mean, that was literally, I felt like the same thing that mm -hmm. I said and felt when I came back into corporate America, I don't want to, I want to spend more time talking about the boundaries piece, but I just want to know your, your mm -hmm. thoughts, your mindset. I just kind of want to do a little level set with why are you coming back to right. corporate, mm -hmm. but then we'll go over and just talk about like the boundaries piece and what that, what that looks like for you. And the okay. reason why I don't want to stay on the, you coming back to corporate too long is because I don't want to do, I, if you, if you take me there, <laughs> Yeah. Come on, somebody. I'm gonna I'm gonna say some things. <laughs> so don't 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 leave me right there. Don't leave me right there. You know oh. <laughs> talk about boundaries. I can do boundaries, but the way Petty Betty is set up in me, because you know, if you're watching us on YouTube, you see it's a little dark here. So we are doing the more laughing at work evening session Thank on you. this one. Shout out to anybody who works at night. Not that you got to listen to this at night, but if you work at night, we see you, we hear you. If yes. you're commuting and driving in the dark, or maybe you go to work in the morning and it's still dark outside, it feel like night. And that's when you're listening to this. <laughs> but anyway, all right, for real. <laughs> Your turn for real now. I'm going to shut up. <laughs> So how I got back to this, I would just say in short, it's because I was focused on building in this season and this was just a piece of it. 
you know, um, I was pursuing. It didn't take away from anything that I was working on as far as the drive of building a foundation that I can, you know, grow upon for the future. This mm -hmm. was something that was going to enhance skill. It was something that I can expand. It was something that is, wasn't just like it was something that was completely irrelevant to what I was already doing. It was just something that was going to add to what I was doing. So when the opportunity presented itself, I'm like, let's do this, you know, and I never felt a release to do anything else accept this so that's how i knew too because i was at peace with it the way it happened i'm convinced the job was vacant all this time waiting for me um because by the way that they shifted and changed it and then you know i just really it really was an overnight thing a phone call like literally so i'm really grateful for that but i would say when you're pursuing and you're clear on where you're going then if there's different pieces or adjustments that you need to make, especially for us as entrepreneurs in that space, whatever we have to do to get closer to the goal is what we have to do. Understanding that there's different seasons of training, of growing, of growth, because there's never going to be a job that we've ever been a part of that we don't drastically impact that job and it don't drastically impact us. Yeah. It's just a part of the puzzle. That is so good. You're right. Cause I, I definitely said for me, a part of the why I say yes to this was, A, because I like paying my bills. <clears throat> Come on, somebody. I like paying my bills. <laughs> and I feel like I'm funny, baby. Well, sometimes the money was getting funny when I was depending on the money from being funny. Anyway. And then the other part of that was because I was spending so much of my own effort and resources trying to run my own media company. You know, mm -hmm. I did my own web series. We did seven episodes. I acted yeah. like all that. I was investing all of my money into it. I did not have, and I was not in a position to get any funding or lending or whatever. I did mm -hmm. not have good credit. I didn't have any of those things to, I didn't have rich people that was like, Oh girl, we just really believe in your morning talk show. We want to give you $20,000 so you can have a, I didn't have that. And so I never got to, I just kept eating my seed. So yeah. I'm like, okay, it's, it's hard to run a business. And then the only opportunities for learning and growing is on my dime. You, Cause you can't even really be creative and free and make mistakes yes. the same way. When you say, this is my $1,500 mortgage. Yeah. I'm going to not pay it this month just so I could try to make this content. So that was really hard for me. And I'm like, okay, a reason why I know that this job that I said yes to is a job for me is because I get to make commercials for them. I get to run stories and I can stay working my skill set of producing oh. content. Yeah. And the moment that that changes that plus I get an opportunity to lead and have employees. And then once that changes, I don't know if this is it really for me because right right i got a savings account now you know i only got 47 dollars in it you know what i'm saying <laughs> give me a minute give me a minute but i gotta save it <laughs> but so you know what you said you're right that that's just really powerful and so like on today's on this week's episode we are just talking about the different dynamics that come along with starting a new job and both of our personal experiences we actually are we have experience coming to new jobs from being self-employed and working for ourselves. Right. So let's talk about boundaries. Like what goes through your mind when you think boundaries? Let's do some, let's just, let's set that right there. <sighs> what does that mean? <laughs> that means that it is one, a long time coming. When you talk Ooh, which about part? The, when you talk about boundaries in the workplace, mm -hmm. You must have boundaries yourself personal right in your personal life so these are limitations these are restrictions these are kind of borders that protect you mentally and provide you self-care mm -hmm. you don't have that in your personal life a bunch of those people will be at the workplace and then we'll have a very interesting work environment because mm -hmm. the truth is is that boundaries enhances relationships and mm -hmm. some people will feel like boundaries may prohibit or block a relationship, but it actually makes it healthy because everybody's space is respected. And it's been a long time coming for me to grasp that uh, with my personality, I'll say. And my personality is naturally loving, you know, Allison, you're my cousin, but not everybody's our cousin, right? And so my natural is 
you know, everybody's my cousin. You're going to love on them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're going to smile and you're going to do a joke every now and then and whatever else. And just the truth is, is that everybody's personality is not like this. <laughs> and Baby, they, you preaching. Right? <laughs> so some people don't see, you know, some people see the work environment. You know, everybody's coming to work for a different reason. We don't really know people's personal goals. But to respect everyone where they are. You know, sometimes maybe have, you know, may not be in love with everyone, but respect is mandatory no matter where we are, you know? So boundaries have all to do with that, you know, the do's, the don'ts, you know, but it's all ultimately to protect. Oh my gosh. So many things. Okay. So <laughs> I love that you said when there are boundaries, everybody's space is respected. Yes. Like that's, all of it, just all of it is so good. First of all, I just know that at some point, as soon as I get my, my life together, I'm definitely, I have to figure out some content. I have so much in relationships, but this is so good because now that, oh, so I don't, we didn't catch up on this or whatever, but her, you know, since we in the, in the break room, cause okay. coworkers, <laughs> coworker cousins catch up at the break room, yes. but girl, I'm, I'm outside. So I'm single. Oh, and this, okay. is, this is my first time being single since I was 19. Wow. Yeah, so that's this this has been quite the roller coaster. <laughs> I say so myself. Anywho. <laughs> um wow. I am learning how valuable or how critical boundaries are in all the relationships. Yes. Like and, and how connected your execution of boundaries is yeah. to your self esteem yeah. and your value and your worth, your self worth. Because when you have low self-esteem and you have low worth and value and those types of things, you don't have any boundaries because you're not thinking about boundaries. You are thinking about always being available to other people because of your fear of losing them, making them a little upset or that you're not good enough or whatever the things are that are symptoms of the root issue with, you know, that low self-esteem, low self-worth, low whatever. And so right. then we see that play out. And so like I was seeing it in various forms in my platonic relationships and my romantic relationships and in my professional relationships right. and because I was not aware that I am that chick period. <laughs> period that I was never saying no I was staying mm -hmm. up 20 hours a day because I want to show you this. I can show you that. I can do this. I can do that. Well, maybe I can't do that, but I'm going to learn an extra eight hours so I can figure it out so I can impress you like right. and then I ended up burning myself out or burning out the relationship, because when you overextend your boundaries, then you got way too many expectations of the other person on the other side. They don't know that you burnt out and you gave everything that you should not have given. Now you're looking at them mad. Right. So all of what you're saying, you're right. It preserves the relationship. Yeah. It makes them healthier. When you don't have boundaries, you're not good. So if we're specifically talking about like at a work in, in the context of work. Right. You're not as good of an employee if you don't have boundaries right. and you're not giving yourself a chance to reset, recharge and refresh so that you can be more excited, more passionate and, and have a fresh look at the work when you come back the next day. Yes. What are some examples specifically mm -hmm. of like boundaries that you are? I want to I want to hear some lack of boundary horror stories. I would love to hear that. <laughs> and I would also like to hear, like, now that you got this new job, yeah. what's at the top of your mind? Like, first of all, let me let them know that I'm not doing this. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing Like, what's your not yeah. doing? So that's really good. Um, so I, I do have horror stories of the boundaries. But um, I'll say for this environment and coming back into the workspace, and I did it pretty good with my last workspace, I would say. Maybe not the last, maybe the time before, if I'm thinking right, which is determining what I'll share and what I won't, right? And let's just say we have the, I call it the, the waterside cooler conversations in the break room, right? Just like this is the break room. And those conversations can vary. You know, how was your weekend? How are the kids? They had a softball game. Oh, I did this. I did that. You know, that type of thing. I have some... Uh, some standards as far as what I'll share and what I won't. And even sometimes what I allow myself to hear, right? Like if I hear a gossip or if I hear something, and, and when I say by gossip, I'm not talking about something that happened in the meeting 
you know, with Sue and, and Chuck. I'm talking about uh no, 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 those are my characters. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Baby, those are the co-workers in the office elephant segment. It's either Susie Q, it's just a yes. Oh anyway, but go ahead. It's crazy how that just came to me though. But that's yes, Sue hearing. and Chuck. That's their name. Sue and Chuck. That's that's what I heard. That's so crazy. Uh but it's not, but it is. <laughs> but um I'm like, you know, if shout it, out to all the Sues and Charles and Chucks that are listening. Shout out to y'all. Especially Chuck if you fine. <laughs> shout out to you. <laughs> Because we outside this summer. Because we, we outside. Come this join spring. Join this summer, you, let's go. I'm pulling up the VA. Matter of fact, when we get off of here, because I'm because I'm turning 40 on my birthday, let's turn up. Anyway, this is the co-worker conversation. This is the break room. Let me stop yelling in the mic at y'all. Let me calm down. Let me calm down. Because I'm soft. <laughs> I don't you know. Soft. I'm my soft. Goodness. Soft light. <clears throat> oh. oh, my goodness. And so what else? So... <laughs> I'm going to join you. So um, I think that when it comes to like bad conversation, um, every office will have that. And when mm-hmm. I'm, when I'm considering gossip, gossip is the intent to slander, the intent to be hurtful, the intent to, to have something negative and just kind of leave it there. It's not an open discussion where we may discuss an issue, but then uh, in or discuss the solution and or possible solution. So that makes a difference in the type of conversation. If it has nothing to do with me, then I won't be in this conversation. If it's something that's negative and it has no ending, it has no landing. Sometimes people just talk to be talking and they don't even, you know what I mean? Like it's a conversation where you just give out all this information. Okay, so why did you share this? To what avail, right? I don't involve myself in those that either. Um, I have no problem saying, hey, stopping you while you're talking. Hey, you know. Thank you, but I don't. I don't want to hear that. Thank you. I don't have no problem saying that now. Before I did used to when I dealt with rejection issues, and so now I have no problem setting the standard. Say this is what I accept and this is what I don't. Um, people often feel comfortable to speak to me or share with me personal things. If I feel it's too personal, I may stop them as well because um, I'm not really sure where it's coming from. You know, I, I'm just very discerning, um, and so even just like in this new space, the some of the. I guess the boundaries too I'm considering is that my mother works in this office and um, she's been there for some years. So it's already a expectation of, you know, and I look exactly like her. So I've, I've got all day yesterday. Oh my gosh. She looks just like, you just like, you know, I look just like her, but we are totally different. <laughs> mm. We're totally different. And um, I am in that environment. I am, I'm, I'm really laid back overall, uh, but um, I'm professional, but then I have humor, right? I'm not a stick in the mud and I'm not spooky. And, you know, but there are some things I'll share. I'll share with you that I have a daughter, you know, what does she do or what do we do on the weekends? I may not feel comfortable to share. I think that relationship and rapport has to grow before we just start talking. And I think that that will determine the character of the person we're talking to. So we know if we even want to have this conversation, how far we want to go. I think that when we work in the space, we get so comfortable with working with someone that sometimes we just share, 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 share. And then you find out, hey, this person doesn't have the best character. Hey, this person doesn't, you know, this person talks too much or shares too much. Or everything I just shared, I have to be, you know, this person might share what I just shared. I have to be careful of what I'm sharing. And why not build a relationship and a rapport in the workspace, you know, even respectable that it's work. This don't mean that we go out to Fridays every Friday. (laughs) This means that we have an understanding. We got to know some things about each other so we can bond and flow better together. But there are certain things I believe that you share and some things that you're really just conscious of not sharing to someone that you don't know in that manner. How well do we know our coworkers? You know, we know them, but then, you know, do we know them? <laughs> you know, you are like, baby, you are, you, you, you stepping all on it. You step, cause I, I talk about on the, on the podcast a lot. You know, I am a recovering, I am still very, very in the early stages of recovery overshare. Yeah. And I have a lot. I got a lot of words. I can say a lot of stuff. And so yeah. I can overshare and still yet be like, I, I did not tell you anything deeply private, yeah. but it was still too much and it works against me. Yeah. And when you overshare, you just give out all of what's inside of you. You, you. People can just pick you apart. 
Yes. That's what I've learned. And I have found how many times oversharing at work has just been so, it just worked against me. Yeah. But I don't have the confidence and the bravery to hit somebody with a, this conversation doesn't serve me, so I'm going to leave. Because <laughs> I just, I, and it's, it's interesting too, because like sometimes people will be like, you know, I know you, like sometimes I know you're ready to fight. Like I, I'm, I'm not that. <laughs> I'm very direct, but I'm usually direct because I'm confused. So I'm asking questions. I can ask direct questions, yeah. but I'm just not about to, but what I have done, baby, let me tell you what I was hitting. I hit them with this at my new job. Yeah. <laughs> I've been hitting them niggas with it all year. <laughs> I tell them real quick. I stop them. I, I, I said, listen, I can't be your friend if we talk about work. Mm-hmm. Every time, and I was just thinking, because I wanted to share that with you when you said that, I was just thinking, I was like, well, nobody has challenged me yet to say, well, I don't want to be your friend. Let's talk about work. Right. <laughs> I think if they go there, I'm like, you know, you're probably not the person that I need to be telling my business. <laughs> but when I say that, though, I yeah. will say, you know, I can't, I can't, we can't talk about work and be friends. Yeah. I'm looking for a friend. And especially since I have been here in a new state, I'm like, I'm looking for friends. And yeah. We're going to be outside of work. I can I can't have a conversation with you about work. I got to know that you could be a friend I could talk to. Yeah. So that has helped me. Yeah. But I also struggle internally where I have found like oversharing and stuff is because like, I come, I'm in the moment that first one, two, three months. And I just, I want to feel apart. I want to feel yeah. like family, get right into it. Let's share, let's get deep, let's be cool. And then I realized three months in, they dumb as in rocks. Yeah. Dumb as in rocks. <laughs> <laughs> they about as dumb as how I just sounded. But you know, it's just like, I'm like, oh wait, this is not the pro- the producer. I don't even want the boss to see me with this. Yeah. <laughs> well, wait a minute, you sleeping with you. Wait a minute, I didn't want to be your friend. I'm just sleeping with him too. No, I'm just kidding. But I'm just saying, you know, it's like, it, it, it's, I, I really appreciate you bringing that up and that area of boundaries because I was definitely thinking at first, like, when I'm off work, I'm off work. Yes. Don't send me this stuff. I'm not doing this. It's not right. Don't think because I don't have a husband that I, that means you get that extra evening time, yes. you know, kind of boundaries. But you're right. That telling yourself when you get out the car in the morning, yeah. I am here for work. I am not here for family, for friendship. I will turn on the More Laughing at Work podcast for my community. I will yes. talk to the podcast when I overshare. We should have some in-person <laughs> meetings. That's what I need to do. <laughs> that would be good. Tell me about your horror story. I got to hear. Story. So... I have had it to where, um, as far as a coworker is concerned, I have had it to where I got so close because I did the same thing. This is why I'm saying this now is because I did it, right? I overshared. I got so comfortable with a woman at my job. She was the accountant. It was a small office. And I think that matters too. Like you have a lot of employees and it's just a handful of us. Like we're going to pass each other in the hallway guaranteed. You know, that's mm-hmm. different, <laughs> you know, because mm-hmm. uh, you have no choice but to lock into each other. You know, so it was me sharing an office with one other person. I was the office manager, and then it was the accountant. She was across the hall, and we we grew close. So we were sharing things, and and I think, see, when you share, there's an expectation of vulnerability because mm-hmm. you're being vulnerable. So there's an expectation of it back, and I thought that's what was happening until there was conflict at work, and her posture was like. It was as if there was a disc, like we were detached. And see, I'm very loyal too. So I have to watch what I can handle. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's like once I love you, I love you, you know? And so once we're in, so I'm like, you know, then it was, you know, we connected on Facebook, connected, you know, text outside of work. You see what I'm saying? It built relationship outside. So when you're acting crazy in the job and the manager is talking and then you jump shit. <laughs> and I thought that we, you know, it impact now our relationship is impacted. Whereas mm-hmm. if we, if we had those boundaries set, I may have respected your business decision or your professional decision, but now I have to take, I took it personal, something I shouldn't take personal because that wasn't set. Cause mm-hmm. I, I, now I have expectations for you that I didn't even verbalize just mm-hmm. because I was vulnerable with you. I'm expecting almost like an entitlement back of you to give me back that same thing that I've given you. Um, when I was learning boundaries of my own, this was a horror story. I don't even know if you want to call it horror, may or may not. But um, there was a girl at my church and uh, my uh, my other, one of my churches. And I am what you call, I used to be, because I didn't have boundaries and this is she. But I call it, I used to call it the um, the victim and the victimizer. 
but they both don't have boundaries. The victimizer is the loud, outspoken, tidal wave you when you're talking. The victim is the one that is so scared and timid to speak up. They just let them do it. So I'm very adamant on my space. I'm from the Bronx. I'm a New Yorker. I'm from the projects. I look at the- No, we could not tell from that accent. I, I look- <laughs> Davey, you didn't have to tell nobody. The borough. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. I mean, I think it's there sometimes. I think it's there. I think it's not. But it's beautiful though. But <laughs> thank you. So in, in the hood, we look through the people. And one day, you know, the woman of God says, I'm coming to your house. Wait, what? And she invited herself to my home. And on a Sunday, because I work so hard during the week, I want to rest. So it's like Sunday naps, chilling, prepare for dinner, lifetime, you know, the things I like to do. And she's going to invite herself to my house. And I let her do it. And I'm now, I'm upset and frustrated because she in my house. And I could have said, no, you cannot come over here. So the next time the uh, one of the guys tried to invite herself to my house, I said, and I don't know what rolls up out of me. I guess I was getting healed because I said, um, uh, no, not today. Oh, no, Key, I'm going to get it. Like, she wasn't even listening to me. You see what I'm saying? It's a lack of respect. I'm telling you not today. It shouldn't have been no other discussion, but you still, that's because you, you, she was used to that with me by then. It's just a short time. So you teach people how to treat you. And so if you're invulnerable with somebody that's immature or not under, you know, mature enough to handle what you've said, they can use it against you. They can ignore what you're saying. They'll ignore your wishes and how you feel. I think she said it maybe two more times before I said, you know what, fine, you could come, but I'm not opening the door. I will peephole you, and I have no problem doing so. And she started laughing. She, she couldn't believe I said that. I said, what you want me to do? You're not listening to me. Did she come to your house? Oh, no. Mm -mm. It, it, oh, I, 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 I took a nap. I, I really don't know what she did, but it was no longer my problem. I stated my case. It was her problem. <laughs> Period. But I make that clear. I will peephole you. People have done, you know, you know what I'm saying? But it has been like a funny, com you know, comedic thing when it happens. But I am so serious. You cannot come here. And I think um, I've grown so bold in speech over the years. I shock myself. And I realize that sometimes it's not the person that can't handle what you have to say. It's you feeling confident and courageous enough to say how you really feel. And not let some, not sacrifice your peace for someone else to be okay when they're not even considering how you feel. I've done things I don't want to do because I didn't set boundaries to only end up resentful with an attitude and frustrated. Over something Baby. I just said no. The way you done dug up in my ass. <laughs> you can come back to a break room, but you can't come back to room here. Let me tell you where you got me. You you call that the victim and the victimizer, and I'm like, no, 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 please don't, please don't, please don't, please don't. And the way you talk through that, I was like, oh, I am the victimizer. That would be me. And I specifically can see a relationship that I was just like, I mean, since you don't talk, I guess you just ain't got nothing to say. But I do. So we go, and you should. You want to talk? No. Okay. And. Even, you know, most recently, probably like six months ago, I was like, I, I think I, I think she overextended mm -hmm. and I didn't pay attention to when she checked out Yeah, and I didn't take into consideration that because I said, if you can't do it, you know, let me know if this is too much, let me know that that really was her permission. I should have just, mm. some people you just, you know, I, and I, and I see my this happening to me with a relationship that I'm in that somebody is doing this to me. Yeah. And that had something to do with why I was really excited about the boundaries conversation with you. Yeah. Because I see someone like, well, Allison could do it. She could do more. She could do more. She could do more because she ain't saying she can't. Yes. Or, or, or she's just not not doing it. Yes. Yeah. And because Allison didn't want to disappoint or Allison didn't want to miss out an opportunity or Allison is afraid that if I don't get this one door, that there will never be another door. I'm not speaking up. So now I see myself how I did the same thing yeah. to somebody else and hearing you talk about, I'm like, wow. Cause Allison would not have said I'm being disrespectful. You know, I, right. I asked her, are you good? Right. Right. I said, I'm respectful. There should be respectful. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> All right. So um, thank you for showing me myself. <laughs> And ladies and gentlemen, we talked about this last week, why you need to have a co-worker cousin that ain't at your work. So I ain't got to walk down the hall and look at Kiana because she know that I ain't ish. <laughs> That's between me and her and this Wi-Fi. <laughs> Everybody that works with me, they don't even know this exists. They could care less. <laughs> so they ain't got to know, you know, so we can air it out here. I love, I love it. <laughs> this, is, this is really helpful. This is really helpful. Shout out to all of the coworker cousins who are starting their new job yes. and their new experience and those who have been there for a while and just want to reestablish the roles and the culture. Yeah. And I think, Kiani, the biggest takeaway is people will treat you the way you let them treat you. Yeah. And I think hearing you talk through this mm -hmm. has encouraged me because, like I said, I, I, I'm not the one that'll say, hey, I don't want to have anything to do with this conversation. Yeah. I'm the one that will try to distract with the joke and or take another way around yeah. the conversation. So, like I said, I will say, you know, hey, listen, we can't be friends and talk about work. Yeah. But I still did not address the fact that I'm the type of chick that don't talk about the boss to me, period. Yeah. I don't like him either, but I'm not about to talk about him because he paid me. <laughs> That's the one. Period. <laughs> yes, he get on my nerves for his boots or he's signing my check. And I might not be mad at him tomorrow. Right. Golly. <laughs> and so I think that, you know, you have really helped me. Like, I feel leveled up. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. A, get confident. B, but like, you know, I, mm -hmm. I was talking that talk a minute ago. I'm that chick. Well, if you are that chick, then be grown <laughs> and say, yo, Y'all, woo, that's deep, y'all. I'm going to go ahead and leave on out. I don't want to be a part of this conversation. Yeah. Call me when y'all talk about something that I cannot get fired for. Yes. Or that's not going to look bad that I'm talking like this. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Anyway, girl, this was so good. What, you got any uh, closing thoughts that you want to leave with our coworker cousins? Um, Closing thoughts, I would just say it's really dope when you can hear, just like you said, you just felt like you leveled up. It's, it's good to always have a conversation. Uh, yeah. Because um, finding yourself in discussions does mature us. And, you know, like I said, I did it. You know, I'm, I'm speaking from not like I haven't done it because I understand it. And I and it really was trial and error. And um, I want we want to be able to go to work, you know, for coworker cousins that you're starting something new, um, fresh. You're still a year in your position. You know, you're in a new space, in a new state. Um, we want to be at peace, right? Like we're choosing to be peaceful and you just protecting that, you know, you want to be relatable. That don't mean if you don't go to a social gathering or go have a good time and show your personality. But, you know, my, my motto is be transparent always because that's how people know you're real, but be um, mindful of who you're vulnerable with because then they have to have a, almost a shield of protection around your heart you know and so if you have to be a little bit more discerning and fill it out I've noticed that if you feel a little nudge that say mm, don't say that pay attention to it probably don't say that you probably it's probably not safe to say it you know um, and you want to be able to go to work without worrying about somebody either have talked about your business, you know, looking at you, judging you, you know, because they're not mature enough to hear what you've said or even your, your way of life. No, you know, you said a key word is culture and people make the culture and we decide how people respond to us. But oftentimes people, when they're getting to know you, you can always reset. If anybody's out there listening, you're like, you know what? I've kind of already did this, like, right? Like I'm doing this. I don't know how to start over. Tomorrow's a whole brand new day. And it's mm -hmm. never too late to show people how to treat you, how to respect you. And, and, and I found, um, because they will always say I'm a good communicator and it's because I say exactly what is, um, but respectfully, right? And so the thing is, I have no problem saying, I know that, Hey, you know, I know we talked about this before and I know this was okay before, but I'm a little uncomfortable. This is not okay now. I realized when I, when I, I call it, pull your card. If, I, if you pull somebody's card, you can stop them immediately. And the mm -hmm. thing is the rerouting is okay too. But what I noticed is when I've done the constant reroutes, I still end up back here because you don't know what you're doing is bothering me. You know what I'm saying? Like I haven't said it. So I'm just kind of adjusting to it. But at some, at some point it may be the, Hey, Let's, you know, let's talk about something else. And then you can help them shift it. So, girl, what you going to do this weekend? I love it. I think those are two that, like, anybody who needs some help, you could do my version, which is, like, you know, you're going to be my friend. We can't talk about work. Right. You can do your version. Uh, what you doing this weekend? Yeah. Period. Right. I love it. Period. 
<laughs> well, thank you so much for hanging out with us. You are a fantastic coworker cousin to have. And uh, again, we're rooting for you. Congrats on thank your you. new job. Thank you for dropping those jewels for us today. And um, we outside. Yep, I'm going to see outside. you outside, sis. Period. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, listen, don't leave. We got some more. We got more laughing all the way to the bank. We got some financial management stuff that we need to talk about. And I have a letter (laughs) off the record. So right after the break. It's so (laughs) is the struggle segment. I mean, I wanted to take the struggle segment out like several times with this show. Can I just be honest? Because first of all, I don't want to do none of the stuff that I'm looking at and saying this is something that I should be doing and talking about with my coworker cousins. I don't feel like it. Like, actually, I don't want to be financially responsible. I want to spend whenever I want to, how how much ever I want to. I don't want to be accountable and um, I don't want to pay attention to the bills or anything else. Like, leave me alone. But once I get that out with my coworker cousin, then I'm back to reality. I'm back to reality. And so that's where we at. That is where we at. This is what we do. We encourage each other. We hold each other accountable on our personal finance journeys. I know that I have a goal of, I got a wealth goal and I got, and I want to be able to transfer wealth to my children and my grandchildren and great grandchildren. And I cannot do that if I don't learn how to balance my checkbook. So listen here today, what we're talking about is perfectly in line with those who are starting a new job. But even if you are not starting a new job, this is still for those of us too, but y'all Can you make sure that when you set up your direct deposit, that you give your that you put things in place that really amplifies you meeting your financial goals? My suggestion, you might have other ones, but my suggestion is set up your direct deposit where you have money going into more than one account. Get you a separate account that you don't look at and put your money over there. Have we talked about this on this show yet? I don't know. It need to be repeated. That has been the only thing that saved my butt. I shared with you what happened with me last week. Uh, but I know that there is some money that I don't need. I don't need mess with. It just goes straight there. And so I want to encourage you. You starting a new job, just do it right from the beginning. Like don't even get used to, don't even get that first check. Like start right now from the beginning, putting your amount. You know what your goal is. You know what you're trying to do by this time next year or wherever your financial calendar, your goals, your vision board is, you know what's on it. And so go ahead and set yourself up from the beginning. And those of you who like, it's really perfect for, let's say if you're starting a new job cause, and this is a promotion, oh bet you just, you should just go ahead and keep whatever you're making right now. Keep it going that way. And the above and beyond you got going to your savings. Some of y'all might be like, well, that's the reason why I got another job girl. Cause I, ain't, I won't make it enough. I know, but you managed to live off of it. You'll figure it out or feel that much better when you know that you have this money that's going towards your investment or your second property or your, I don't know, whatever, you know? So consider setting that up. Those of you who've been there for a while and you're just trying to figure out how can you turn up on your savings, consider getting another account. It really does work. And one that you're not touching, you're only checking in to confirm your deposits and <laughs> that ain't nobody playing in your money or whatever each month, but that you're not, it's not a checking account. That has been a game changer for me and has hugely largely helped me with my savings. So that's our, our one little takeaway today. More laughing all the way to the bank. I'm trying to laugh at you all the way to the bank because I'm tired of crying. <laughs> all right, look, one off the record. Yeah, you down? Can we talk about it? I especially want to talk about it to the people who are just starting a new job. <laughs> all right, right after the break. Welcome back. Okay, y'all. So for the off the record segment, which 
by far is my favorite because it is where you get to write into your favorite HR lady. That would be me. And I am going to give you some HR ish advice. I prefer your letters to be full of foolery, (laughs) kind of, sort of, but also Hey, let me know how I can help. You might not be that comfortable talking to your HR team. Depending on how serious you are in your letter, I'll be serious in my response. But today, we did not have a letter, but I made up one. (laughs) Y'all already know I was about to say your mama. Okay, whatever. So this is my off the record. I have an off the record. I just want to give a little advice. If you're starting a new job or if your friend is about to start a new job, you could share this with them or I'm just giving you a little advice. Read that daggone handbook that they gave you. Read that daggone hand. I'm not playing. Read the hand- read the handbook. <laughs> Why y'all be reading the handbook? That's how you get caught up. And we talked about that last week too. It's stuff that be in the handbook. They hide it and slide it right up in there. That's my off the record. (laughs) Okay. I would say that on the record, but I wouldn't say it like that. I would say it on the record so that I could have proof that we told y'all to read the handbook. But I'm telling you off the record, because I don't want to let you know that it's the handbook that gets you caught up. So go ahead and take the time to read that handbook. You will find so much about, find out so much about your company, stuff that you do need to know. You need to know how they think. You need to understand the culture and the philosophy. And you, for real, more than that, you need to know what those policies are. You need to know what you decided up for. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If you started a new job, why don't you go ahead and tell me about it? We'd love to hear. And congratulations. If nothing more, congratulations. You are here. You got it. This is a new opportunity. And we are all rooting for you. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today on the More Laughing at Work podcast. I am uh, super grateful for our coworker friend, our coworker cousin, because she definitely family. Again, shout out to Keani Bryan. Thank you so much for her for stopping by. And I appreciate you for spending time with us and just, you know, giving me feedback about the podcast and growing with me. You know what I'm saying? Started from the bottom. Now we here, period. Listen, please write to me more laughing at gmail.com. Let me know what's on your mind. How are you consuming the co- the podcast or what questions do you have or what would you like to talk about? If this has at all been good to you or for you or interesting, if you don't like the podcast, keep it to yourself. <laughs> okay. You got other stuff you can listen to, but if you do, you know, I take constructive criticism, but it better be constructive and <laughs> more criticism. It's just a- anyway, I hope that you have a fantastic day and I hope that you seize the opportunity that is right in front of you. I'm your host, comedian Allison Moore, and I will see you next week. Toodles!